Greetings of profound love to the people, to all comrades in arms, to all comrades in the concentration camps of fascist America, and to all the children. This is Yolanda speaking. When we say revolution, we do not use the word loosely. By revolution, we mean the violent fight for freedom, freedom that can be gained in no other way than by fighting. People do not fight because they enjoy it or because they relish the thought of their own death or the deaths of their beloved comrades. They fight to survive because they understand the violence of fascism. And that violence means genocidal death at the hands of dictators who mass 500 pigs armed with military weapons, fragmentary grenades, and incendiary grenades to burn six people to death. Dictators who imprison over 22,000 brothers and sisters in the state of California alone. Dictators who take jobs away from those who are begging to work. Dictators who take food from the mouths of those who are starving. Dictators who take joy from the hearts of those who love the people. The military industrial state of the ruling class can only survive through repression these fascist dogs must destroy truth in the minds of the people to keep them pacified. They must make people afraid so they will do nothing. They must make people feel isolated from each other and powerless. Fascism tries to do all these things through the brutal violence of a military police force, the lurking Big Brother presence of the FBI, CIA, and their computer files, through media propaganda. Fascism tries to tell us we are fools to resist because we will in the end be destroyed. If we were only six people, they would be correct, for they can destroy the lives of six or nine or even 100 people. But the truth the pigs try so desperately hard to repress is one that people are coming to understand only too well. People are ridding themselves of the bourgeois desire to lead a long life and instead wish to fight for a better, more human life. Yes, repression breeds resistance. It is proven to be true as each day goes by, as dark eyes grow darker with hate, and strong muscles grow stronger with rage, and cold steel grows colder in the firm grip of a hand that loves the people. We must face the inevitable truth that repression will grow more intense as the power-hungry pigs see their grip slipping. Whites in this country have historically had a tendency to back off when repression intensified, feeling they could escape the vicious tentacles. For this reason, black, brown, Asian, and Indian brothers and sisters have not trusted whites, feeling that they would desert the fight as it was just beginning in order to save their own skins. These brothers and sisters were often proven correct. That is why we say, anyone who loves freedom must prove this love through action, not words, and only after they have fought can they speak. So we are freedom fighters. We may be murdered, but whether we live or die, the day is close at hand when the people will join together in an army because they wish to survive on their own terms and the people will change the course of history through their courage and determination. To all those whose fear is stronger than their hatred of the pig, I must say that the freedom fighters do not bring repression to your door. The fascist pig is responsible for this, and soon even those of you with white skins will lose your privileges. The pig will no longer knock and be very polite. He will shoot to kill. He will burn and rape. He will imprison and starve. He does this already in the ghettos of this country and will expand his efforts to stay in his greed-filled position of power. And if people wish to survive, they will have to defend themselves with as much rage as the pig would use against them. Only in this way can the people of this country avoid the mass genocide that occurred to Jews in Germany and leftists in Chile. All these things have been said before, but I will continue to say them until the reality is so clear we no longer need to repeat the words. That will be the day when our mind accepts what we see with our eyes. 
To those who have attempted to express their love for us by calling for our surrender, we say, we must express our feelings of love only by continuing the fight. We renounce our class and race privilege and say that we love no individual more than we love freedom. The fight has cost us of the SLA eight comrades, six dead and two in concentration camps, as well as the death and imprisonment of our comrades in arms of the BLA, the BGF, and the Weather Underground. We clearly understand that the reality of revolution will include death and imprisonment, suffering and violence, as well as victory. The price is high, but we accepted this reality when we picked up the gun for the first time and nodded yes to freedom, to love, to living. Because we must endure the suffering does not mean we have any doubt in the beauty of the victory. Our comrades died the way they chose to live, fighting courageously. They did not compromise to the hundreds of insects crawling the community who resorted to burning them to death rather than facing in battle the ruthless strength and courage of freedom fighters. 54th Street is not an end but a beginning. People are gathering on the street. They are feeling the strength of their own bodies. They are clearing the fear and blind ignorance from their eyes. Sin-Q, Faiza, Zoya, Kujo, Jelena, and Gabi conquered the fear and will never die in the minds of those who, are, who see the monster and know he will be destroyed. All comrades, dead and alive, in prison and out, underground and on the streets are calling on all the people to conquer the fear and join the battle, realizing what can happen when 500 pigs surround a house and then are surrounded by 50 or 100 or 500 irate niggers firing from their houses, alleyways, treetops and walls with a straight and fearless shot to bring down the helicopter, the SWAT squad, the LAPD, the FBI, the neighborhood snitch. Consider the day when the pig won't even enter the communities of the armed people. We got to make the pig fear for his life because he knows every eye behind every curtain in the ghettos, barrios, and poor communities is setting down the barrel of a piece ready to pull the trigger at any moment. There's been a lot of talk about wasted lives, referring to the six dead bodies of our comrades and to Tanya, Tico, and myself. The ironies of racist, fascist America are once again reflected with sickening reminder. There are no editorials written for the wasted lives of the brothers and sisters daily gunned down in the streets and prisons. The present uproar of white America over the fate of Patty Hearst was barely a murmur as hundreds of young men, mostly black and brown, went off to die in Vietnam. We of the SLA hate the historical reality that requires young people to struggle to survive and to die violent deaths. We hate the reality in this country that murdered our six comrades, sisters, and brothers, and daily continues to murder throughout the world. Because we hate this reality, we must fight to destroy it by any means necessary. Yes, history might be different if they had lived, but revolution is not made by saying, if only. We do know that the lives of revolutionaries will never be wasted. Right now, there are men and women, young and old, black, brown, Asian, Indian, and white, who are filled with the fighting spirit of King, of Malcolm, of George, of Sin Q, of their mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers who have died at the hands of the pig. And these are a new breed of the baddest motherfuckers alive. Yes, we hate the pig and we are at war with the pig, and we will kill the pig as violently as he has killed comrades of ours for centuries. We will do this because we love the people we are lucky enough to know, and we love the people we will never know, the beautiful babies, the angry young men and women, the understanding mothers and fathers who have seen the rising tide for as long as they have been alive. Our past as middle-class white Americans was meaningless and was truly wasted potential, full of desperate pessimism that could feel the emptiness of capitalist America even before we could understand it. Our lives now are not easy or full of joy. We may die, 
but our lives are real because we see the truth and the future. Right now the people are igniting the sparks of a great prairie fire and the firefighters will soon be helpless against the freedom fighters because the flames will be far too hot and deadly for their weak will to endure and their evil spirit will die with them in the ashes. Once again, my love to all the comrades.